Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about the mental trap that we often experience as OCD sufferers where we feel like our thoughts are extremely overwhelming. Uh, those are the only things that we can think about or only things that we can see. We are unable to think about anything else. We're unable to do anything else in our life and we just feel stuck stuck in our head completely. But before I go on, please subscribe to this channel. Please like this video. Uh, please comment over here. Let me know if I covered everything you wanted me to cover and let me know what I can cover in another video on the same topic if you want me to go in more detail. But quickly, what I wanted to do was just to take a look at what are the kind of compulsions uh, that come up when we feel like we are in that mental trap and what kind of um, what kind of mental trap experience did I have in my own recovery journey? So first of all, the most common thing that we try to do is like analyze our thoughts, right? Trying to figure out are they real? Are they not real? Is this OCD? Does this mean something about me? And then there's a cycle of rumination that carries on and we are engaged in this like, you know, a mental cycle of trying to have some kind of certainty and control. But then the other like, common compulsions that go along with it is trying to forcefully think of something else. So this was my case, essentially, what happened was where you're trying to refresh your brain and, or like reload your brain, um, it, the images in your brain or the thoughts that are coming up or the words that are popping up, the sounds that are coming in, you're trying to reload and refresh your brain so that you can think of something else or you're trying to forcefully think of other things things that make you feel sad, um, not sad, sorry, things that make you feel nice and happy or calmer and you are forcefully trying to distract yourself. So it's kind of like, you know, thoughts are at the forefront. You're like, no, go back. Um, and then you think of something else, but then that thought comes back again and you're no. And then it's, it's a constant cycle of like refreshing, trying to refresh your thoughts. And when we try to do that, it's, we can't focus on anything else. Even when we're having a conversation with someone, at the back of our mind, we are playing this game of, um, I don't I don't know exactly what Russian roulette is, but I think it would, that metaphor would fit over here. It's like a game of Russian roulette, um, where it's like, no, I still need to engage mentally, even while having a conversation. So you're like, yeah, I'm doing great. My job is going really well. You know, studies have been hard, but, and then the cycle is going in the background. So. It can feel quite consuming. It takes up a lot of your energy. It takes up a lot of your mental time, uh, emotional energy, and um, it, it it kind of never stops. Even when you're doing things, it kind of never stops. Um, and this can manifest in many, many ways. So like uh, with our OCD, it'll, it'll be like, no, I should not think about these things because what if I act on my thoughts or with harm OCD or POCD, it's like, oh, I. what if I become my thoughts? What if my thoughts become real if I let them stay? What if I become one with them? What if I start to be okay with them or like them if I don't try to get rid of them or try to think of something else or distract myself? And, you know, I mean, we come up with all these kinds of reasons and justifications to keep on doing those um, mental compulsion than that mental recycling kind of mechanism that we end up in. And for me, what was... Um, what happened was in the contamination sense that it was mental and emotional contamination. So I felt like that if I let certain thoughts be there in my head, or if I let them pop up in my head, then I would feel mentally and emotionally contaminated. And that would make me feel extremely uneasy internally. I would feel very uneasy and uncomfortable. And, and and then like whatever kind of theme that your mental trap is related to, what really starts to happen is that you begin to develop this very strong fear of feeling overwhelmed and this kind of fear of brain overload. Because you think that if you let the thoughts be there, it's going to feel so bad and so overwhelming and you're going to feel so anxious and afraid that there's no way that you're a you're going to be able to get out of it. So when we are doing those mental compulsions of trying to think of something else, forcefully distract ourselves, we're essentially trying to rescue ourselves and save ourselves from that, like, from that brink of complete, um, maybe psychosis or that complete, 
loss and um you know losing the battle of like your mental health and your safety and your well-being right because we're like if we let it go beyond a certain point then we're totally gone for good like then there's no there's no coming back we're going to feel permanently damaged and broken we will not be able to think right ever again we're not ever going to be feel right ever again no emo- good emotion will ever come it will always be sad miserable depressed and the image that kind of conjures up in our mind when we are uh, when we think of ourselves when uh, like in that state of being overwhelmed or sad or depressed is like you know like in movies the typical depiction of someone who is depressed who is not eating not um, not sleeping well uh, someone who does not meet a lot of people someone does not who does not take like baths anymore or doesn't clean themselves so their hair is out of place their cl- clothes are stained they're just walking around in a robe um, they're barely like you know indulged in food and they're just put on the tv mindlessly and they uh, they have outbursts on people and they are just perpetually unhappy that's the kind of like typical image that we have in our head and we're like there's no way we're ever going to come back from that and that permanence of feeling miserable is going to take over us so that's what we're trying to do there we're constantly trying to save ourselves from that but that is of course like a very exaggerated and very blown out of proportion um perspective that we have of what will happen if we let the thoughts be there because we are essentially trying to constantly exert control and certainty over our brain and that's something we cannot do because the brain is way too complex for the for us to try to control it so i mean obviously we're trying to do it through our brain so the brain is essentially trying to control itself which it knows that it ca- cannot do but it still tries to do it it's kind of like a strange um um what do you call it um self conflicted notion that the brain comes up with but essentially what happens is that um we start to avoid those thoughts out of out of that fear of and it's that fear of fear cycle that what if we get stuck in these thoughts what if we get stuck in those emotions what if we think it is okay um what we are thinking about and all that kind of stuff so but not only do we mentally start to avoid those things we also start to physically and through behaviors avoid certain situations people and places again that was my absolute experience i started to avoid certain places and people that i thought would give me an absolute brain overload my intrusive thoughts would not go down i will not be able to handle them i might my brain might even just shut down on its own and it it's not something i would be able to handle it will be the absolute worst thing i could ever go through right um so outwardly behaviorally i started to avoid certain situations and people like that and so and not only that the other uh, interesting thing was that i also started to verbally <laughs> avoid certain things or even out in writing so um so just like from the top of my head this is this is not the actual fear i had but just as an example if i was afraid of the color yellow for example or it's something that i associated something bad with i would not want to think about the word ye- about yellow the color yellow right but at the same time i also didn't want to say yellow so i would always look for synonyms or like some other way of you know saying the same kind of thing i would maybe say a yolk color or the color of the sun like you know i mean i would find alternate ways of saying it but just not yellow and i would also not want to write it out even on text so if i was talking to someone i would not want to say the word yellow i would avoid doing that i would avoid wearing yellow clothes so so just because i was afraid of getting stuck in that mental trap which i often did by the way um i would also physically start to avoid things because i thought oh no this would lead to that mental trap and i would not be able to get out of that um so so it really changes not because a lot of people like when i speak to them as well they're like no i'm not doing any physical compulsions just mental ones and that can be true i mean 80% of the time 90% of the time they might be doing uh, mental compulsions but then it's very sneaky because you don't even realize it you're all, most people are also behaviorally doing a lot of compulsions or avoidance compulsions and stuff like that because they're afraid 
that those certain actions or places or triggers or people or sounds or whatever it is, it will lead to that kind of mental trap of you engaging with your intrusive thoughts, they becoming overwhelming, you not being able to handle them, you not being able to see anything else. And so the interesting part over here is though, because it's like, oh, so I mean, how do I deal with that? How do I like, you know, uh, what's the way out of this mental trap? And the interesting part is that, or the unfortunate part is that unless and until we do not prioritize recovery, there's no way to get out of that mental trap because the only way to get out of it is for it for for you to wait for the thoughts to go down on their own, for for the thoughts to subside on their own. Because at some point, like maybe for 20 hours, you will have those thoughts like, but like, but after that, your brain will automatically at some point slow down a little bit at least, and it will give you some kind of relief, right? So, so relief eventually does come on its own, but we think it will never come. So we want, that's what we're afraid of. We think relief will never come. We will never be able to find a way out of it. So we want to really find a solution to never experience that again, right? So either if you're not actively working on recovery, the only way to get through is to kind of just wait for it to go down because you might even try to do physical compulsions. You might even try to do mental compulsions. After a certain point, those will also stop having any kind of relief or calming effect at all, right? Like for example, with me, I had some go-to songs, images, people, memories that I would think about to try to calm myself down or try to like feel happy or feel okay or be like, oh, okay, if I think about this, I will be completely distracted from this really fearful thing. And that would give me like literally like five second relief or something like that. But then obviously it, it stopped having an effect. So I had to, after every few months, I had to look for something new that would maybe give me a new like kind of feeling of relief and calmness and all that. What eventually when I started to work on recovery, the what the the funny part was that when I actually started to not avoid um, triggers or not avoid people, situations, sounds, stuff like that, that I thought would give me that overwhelming sense of intrusive thoughts and emotions and all those things. When I started to not avoid them, that's kind of when the thoughts went down. That's when my mental compulsions that kind of happened automatically, that mental trap of just feeling like there's, you are in this mental cage. That's when it kind of opened up. When I actually started to do exposures, when I actually started to um, physically, behaviorally not avoid triggers or situations, people, words, sounds, songs, um, books, movies, writing things out, anything that was triggering me. When I actually went towards it is when it kind of lost steam and lot, and kind of lost its power. But I know that before you do those, you are 100% convinced that if you do those exposures, if you do not, if you do not avoid, if you face, if you go towards that discomfort, then it's going to get even worse. That is like the thought that we have. We think that there's, I mean, there's no coming back from that. And, um, and, and then it'll be, there's going to be permanent damage, but trust me. Really, trust me. Um, if you go towards that fear, that is when the thoughts will start to come down. And but aside from the behavioral changes, it really is important to really break down your irrational beliefs and your fears. Because when I started to do that, because all I wanted to do was not think about my fears at all. I just never wanted to even address them. I was like, just like go away, go away, go away. But actually when I started to break them down, when I started to look at what the beliefs were behind them, and I started to give it the constructive attention that it kind of needed, not the compulsive attention, like, oh my God, I need to figure this out, 
but the kind of attention that it's like okay how can i change my perspective on this how do i allow myself to sit with these thoughts and fears and beliefs when i started to bre- break those down that's when like that's also where the cracks in my fears started to happen because i started to change my perspective and that new perspective started to make the fears feel less threatening and that feeling of less like a lower threat lowered the amount of intrusive thoughts and also their intrusiveness so maybe i was still having the same amount of the thoughts but they were not having that kind of power over me anymore that way so and and i and i also and that is when it became easier to let the thoughts be there and not constantly throw them out of my mind and constantly try to distract myself from it it became much easier to let the thoughts be there and not engage with them not analyze them not take them out of my mind um not try to force myself to feel a, a different way if i felt mentally emotionally contaminated i let myself feel mentally emotionally contaminated if i felt uncomfortable i let myself feel uncomfortable i let everything be there without trying to engage with it and paul david's book at last life is the book that really helped me with that really 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 helped me with that uh to learn to not do anything to learn to do nothing if you feel uncomfortable if the thoughts come if the sensations come if the emotions come letting those be there but all of these things have to be done simultaneously as well because um one not just one thing is not the entire solution you have to learn to take a distance and not engage but then you also have to break down the fears and beliefs but then you also have to change things behavior wise collectively these help break that mental trap that you are getting stuck in constantly so that's all i want to cover today i want to relate that to my own journey i want to relate some of the compuls- compulsions that happen and the mechanisms we try to deal with the mental trap and um, have a nice christmas and i'll see you guys soon on another video uh, let me know what you thought of this